Space friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from TozawaTanks.com. For those of you that follow my channel, you know that I have a lot of fish tanks and you know that the Brackish Aquarium is the latest addition. Most recently, I shared with all of you that I finally got my mud skippers and uh, I can't tell you how amazing these little guys are. Uh, my wife did uh, name them Larry, Curly, and Mo, so the Three Stooges, so uh, a lot of you thought that was pretty funny. So in addition to having the setup for the mud skippers where I have the beach, um, kind of where this, uh, this big beach is uh, built up for the mud skippers for them to uh, spend most of their time above the surface, I do have this large area of water that's about 25 plus gallons of water that is brackish. I asked a lot of you for some advice on what you thought I should put in there. I shared with you guys what I thought I was going to put in there. Um, I was going to put some bumblebee gobies. Um, and I haven't given up on that idea just yet. But uh, there were several comments about a figure eight puffer. Now I did a lot of research on a figure eight puffer and uh, determined that it would be suitable for this tank based on the size of the puffer and the size of the mud skippers and uh, also that it would uh, do well in the brackish water. So about a week and a half ago, a friend of mine came up to San Francisco. Um, he wanted to pick up some Mbuna from me. Um, I have a whole bunch of Mbuna and I gave him a bunch of them. And um, he also brought me a couple sumps. He brought me a couple really huge sumps. They're actually too big for me to use right now. So I just kind of have them stored away for uh, future use. But anyway, so um, while he was here, I said, hey, let's, uh, let's go down to the fish store. And there's a particular fish store here in San Francisco that does uh, specialize in a lot of oddball stuff. So I said, let's go down there. Let's check out some fish. I want to look at some Tanganyikan fish. I want to see if I can find anything for the Brackish Aquarium. And maybe you'll get some more Mbuna for your uh, new uh, Mbuna tank. So we went in and saw a bunch of fish in there. And uh, there was a lot of cool stuff to see. Um, I was uh, kind of you know having a hard time choosing what i wanted but ultimately i decided on the figure eight puffer they had several to choose from i ended up buying the one that looked the most healthy um he was the fullest the most color the most active and the least amount of fin nippage on his fins when i brought him home i put him in a quarantine tank i did share with some of you uh that follow me on instagram or facebook uh that i did get the puffer so if you do follow me on instagram or facebook you will you know see things earlier than on this channel usually by at least a week or so sometimes a couple of weeks what is this? A figure eight puffer for the brackish tank. So cool, so cute. Picked him up just now, obviously. Not ready to go in with the mud skippers. He's gonna go down in the quarantine tank. My recommendation is always quarantine your fish, so he's gonna go down here and get treated. And then after the quarantine process, we'll add him into the brackish system. But anyway, I put the uh, puffer, I set up uh, one of my quarantine tanks for brackish water, put him in the quarantine tank and treated him to ensure that he was, uh, you know, free of any diseases, parasites, etc. And then uh, just put him in the brackish tank. So the puffer's been doing great. Even when he was in quarantine, he was eating. So um, first I put in like some freeze-dried mysis shrimp and I have a lot of snails. A lot, a lot, a lot of snails. And I decided I would throw a few in the in the quarantine tank, see if the the fish would eat them. Even though he, you know, he had just been in there and and uh, was still getting acclimated. But anyway, he ate the snails. He ate them right up. And uh, so when I put him into this uh, new tank, I didn't really wait a whole lot of time as far as putting snails in his tank too. So I grabbed kind of a net full of uh, Malaysian trumpet snails threw them in the tank and immediately this little guy started chomping on them, crushing them in his beak. Now, if you're familiar with puffers, you know that they do have a beak. Um, basically, they have these uh, two kind of uh, tooth-like structures, basically a beak, and they continue to grow. So they need to have something hard that they will chew on that will kind of wear those teeth down. If they don't have that, and if they only have soft foods, then what will happen is um, the teeth could grow very long, you could have problems for their fish, and uh, some people will trim theirs uh, you know, manually, so you'd have to catch your fish and hold it and trim the teeth, and that's really not a good idea. Um, so anyway, you wanna give uh, your puffer fish something hard to eat that will help to wear down their beak. And Malaysian trumpet snails having a very hard shell are perfect for that. 
perfect size. He was even uh, tackling some of the larger ones, but for the most part, he was kind of going after the medium ones. One of the things that while I was doing my research on the snails is I learned that trumpet snails actually do pretty well in brackish water. There have been some scientific studies that said that they can actually survive up to 1.025 on salinity, which is basically what you would have your reef tank, um, and that's far saltier than what you would have a brackish system. This brackish system is currently right around 1.007 to 1.008. So um, just kind of, you know, medium brackish and uh, everyone seems to do uh, very well with that. Um, if you are going to have a brackish tank and if you have any saltwater tanks, you do want to have a way of measuring the salinity. Um, you can use like a uh, refractometer. Uh, there are some other things that you can use. Um, but uh, anyway, so uh, you do want to make sure that you, uh, you know, set up that proper solidity if you are going to keep a brackish tank. So that's about it. I just wanted to give you guys all an update on the figure eight puffer, let you know what's going on with this tank. A lot of you asked about the plants. Um, I just threw some little pieces of Java fern that I had laying around, you know, like when your Java fern propagate and they have like a leaf that makes another plant. I just took some of those little clippings and threw them in there. They've been in there for a few weeks and so they're doing okay. So I don't know. We'll just see what happens. Um, I talked before about doing like the mangrove, um, but that can have some logistical challenges because I'd have to cut a hole in the acrylic lids and I just want to make sure that my mudskippers can't escape because they are climbers. Some of you had questions on the lid. Um, I do have some uh, tight fitting lids here as you can see. I made these out of acrylic. Acrylic will kind of bow um, in an aquarium environment so I had to add some bracing to uh, this one here which is a thinner piece. And then this piece is a lot thicker so it doesn't bow as much. And then I drilled a little hole and put a little twisty tie on there so I can uh, easily grab it and pull it up. So for now I'm going to kind of let this uh, brackish tank alone. I'm going to let the muskapers kind of do their thing for a while. They've been super active, super fun. I'm going to let the figure eight puffer kind of put on some size and uh, to keep eating the snails. I will continue to put snails in there um, as I have so many. Actually I took a big, uh, like a big net full and put them in different parts of the tank so that they can kind of burrow in the sand. So when they come out in the evening and things like that, uh, the puffer might be able to find them, but I didn't want him to try to eat them all at once because he did and uh, you know, let him have kind of a steady food supply. But I've got trumpet snails and a couple other tanks that are just exploding so I can get more anytime. So later on, I might do something else with the puffer. Um, I really need to think about what I want to put in there. Some of you had mentioned that the bumblebee gobies would do well with the puffer. My only issue with the bumblebee gobies, and I found some, is they are very small. Um, the ones that I saw were very small at least. So if I got them, I'd have to obviously quarantine them and then maybe keep them separate in a separate tank for quite a while till they grew in size. Otherwise, I feel like the puffer might get after some of the smaller ones and they might get eaten. Um, additionally, the mudskippers, um, they are pretty aggressive eaters. Now, they're very small and the puffer's way too big. Um, they're, there's no way that the mudskippers would go after the puffer and the puffer's not going to go after the mudskippers. But um, the mudskippers may also go after some of the smaller um, gobies because um, they are pretty aggressive as far as they're eating. So um, they'll eat crickets and worms and things like that. So um, anyway, I'm not sure what I'm going to do as far as other fish in this tank. Um, if you have some ideas, I would love to read those. Um, some of you mentioned like crabs, um, you know, that's an idea that I could put in there. But, you know, again, I don't want to do anything that's going to harm the fish that I have in there so far, the mudskippers or the uh, puffer. So um, I want to find something that is really cool, really unique, that is, you know, something different that you don't normally see. I don't want to do, you know, um, mollies or anything. I don't want to do sword tails. I don't want to do guppies, although they would do well. That might be a good source of food if I put guppies in there. Maybe I will do guppies in there. That would be kind of neat if I had like a whole bunch of guppies in there with the figure eight puffer, then the guppy fry would probably get eaten by the mudskippers and the puffer, but I don't know, maybe not. So anyway, if you have any ideas on that, let me know. Put your thoughts down below in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm trying to hit 500 thumbs up on all my videos now, so uh, if you don't mind, just give it a thumbs up. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.